Meyer Sports of all sorts is back. He is easily one of, if not the most charismatic figures in the history of Cincinnati sports. Not only was Pete Gilling a walk-in quote machine, he also engineered Xavier basketball into the big time. In his tenure as Xavier head coach, please say hi to Coach Pete Gillen. Welcome back to Cincinnati. It's good Ken, to see you. Great to be here. Great, great to be in Cincinnati. I got a good phenomenal. cut, man. He patches me up. If he has a good day, good. I look okay. 202 coaching wins at Xavier. I looked this up. A lot of Xavier fans are going to point to a lot of different things here. Right. Maybe the win over number one UC. Remember that game? Perhaps the NCAA tournament wins over Georgetown and other teams. My guess is if you're the typical coach, you remember the losses yes. more than you remember the wins. But I also guess you probably remember most the relationships yeah. that you built along the way with assistant coaches and, and whatnot. Is that fair to say? It's fair to say, Ken. You're 100% right. You know, the Cincinnati game, as you know, we skip process to that. I wish I, when they were number one. But the Georgetown was a big win for us. Uh, yeah, we, the relationship with the coaches was great. And I miss the players. The young players keep you young, you know. So uh, I miss coaching. But... It, 30 years a long time. I'm hitching, twitching. If I yeah. take the wrong pill in the morning, Ken, I'm in trouble. But I think all right today. I'm okay. I take think. the wrong pill. <laughs> but I mean, obviously, you've yeah. you've you've weathered it well. It's a yeah. very difficult profession that you're in. It is, Ken. It's a yeah. A lot of people you have to appease. A lot of constituencies. You know, yeah. you you got the fans. You got the parents of the players. You got the players. You got the high school coaches, AU coaches, the media. You know, it's yeah. a lot of things. So, it's a tough business. You're almost like a doctor. 24 hours a day on call. Not as important as a doctor, right. but like that, you're always on call and right. ready. And a, and, and a profession that gets increasingly difficult with social media. Oh, yeah. And obviously, kids are different today than what yeah. they were even 10 years ago. They're tough. There's yeah. a little bit of entitlement with kids. No question, day. Ken. No, no question. They all want, you know, this, and the parents are more involved because the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow is great. So yeah. the, each player's got a posse. They all got somebody handling them, taking care of them. So it's very complex. It was tough when I coached, and I've been out like nine years. It's even tougher now. Yeah. I, I was looking at your coaching tree. It, it's, it's pretty notable. Thank There's you, some man. of the players that you've touched and coaches you've touched. We all know about Skip Prosser. We all know about Chris Mack, yep. the guy who transferred in when you were the head coach yep. ball at Xavier. Now, of course, he's there. But when you watch Mack coach, or for example, some of the others from your coaching tree, like Skip used to yep. coach, or Dino Gaudi or right. Conti Stamus, right. can you see some of your coaching style and what they do? And if so, how much of, uh, of an enjoyment and a benefit is that to you? Each guy's their own person, you know what I mean? Skip changed defense a little bit like we did, Dino a little bit. I think you know, Chris is his own man. They play real good defense. They play a little different style, but uh, they're all outstanding coaches. You know, maybe hopefully I helped them a little bit, but they got to be themselves. But Chris Mack is a great choice for Xavier, and they're very fortunate did to have him. Did you think he would be a head coach when you had, or do you think he was coaching material when you had him? It's a great question. When he transferred from Evansville, as yep. you know, he transferred in, and he sat out the year, and he played with the second team against our first team. And they used to beat us three out of five. So I said, what's going on? You know, because he knew all weaknesses. And yeah. So I said, Chris, go get a drink of water. And I put somebody else in that we did better the first thing. But I thought he could be a coach. I didn't know if he would, but I thought he had great potential, honestly, yeah. at that time. Yeah, and, and obviously a guy who, like you, has found great success at Xavier. It, it, it is a special place, is it not? I it mean, is. You have to be a certain player and a certain coach to work there. You've got to be academically in tune to what's going on. And, you, and Mac, like you, have found players like that. Yeah, thank you, Ken. Yeah, it's a special school with a special spirit. It's a family atmosphere. They're committed to excellence. They want their students to, to get a great education, a great experience. They went to Brazil. They took a course, a preparation. A, a, somebody in the business school taught it. They got two credits for going to Brazil. And they went into inner city, the real poor areas, yeah. learned a little bit about the culture. So Xavier's committed to excellence athletically and academically. You had some fierce crosstown shootouts when you were here with the University <laughs> of Cincinnati. I mean, you remember some of those? i got to ask you about yeah. Bob Huggins. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I don't think you guys were ever tight. Yeah. I just wonder where you are right now. Are you friendly? Do you oh, talk? Yeah. What's your relationship with Huggins, if anything? No, believe it or not, we did a game of his a couple years ago, right? I went down, I, was, I had a break, so I went to see him play against American University in West Virginia. I drove over about four hours, and I saw him, we chatted. He says, come on over to my house after we get a beer. I looked around, me? Yeah, I said, yeah. I said, yeah. I said, so I said, yeah. So I said, he's not going to call me. I went back to the hotel, he called me. And I went over, we had a couple of beers in his right. house, a couple other coaches, a women's coach, a couple of high school guys. That was great. So we're fine now. You know what I mean? You, Did know, you go to the movie theater in his basement? No, I don't think I'm going to invite it to his daughter's <laughs> wedding. But I mean, I'm say we're, we're, we're friendly now. And just sometimes when you're banging heads and the pressure gets you, we're fine now. I mean, he's a great coach, tremendous competitor, doing an outstanding job at West Virginia. So we're, we're fine now. It just sometimes the, the stress, you know, gets you a little bit. And, you know, maybe we both went a little bit overboard. And you're in town this week weekend yeah. for what? Well, all for one. They have a yeah. big event last night, a big fundraiser last night. And Byron Larkin was there and a lot of, you know, the other you know, alumni and stuff, it was great. 
and they have a big golf outing tomorrow uh, at Kenwood Country mm -hmm. Club. Uh, I'm a hacker. They usually pay me in Virginia to stay off the golf course, right. but we're going to play tomorrow right. and uh, hopefully raise some more money. So uh, just a big fundraiser event. They were kind enough to ask me to come back, and I'm thrilled to be back in Cincinnati, see a lot of great people, and come back to a school that I loved. You look great. Not bad. Thanks, Ken. I, you know, they said my cut man, if he has a good day, I look, look all right. You look good, man. So, you know, it's the, you know, red hair. Right. We never get old. We just make other people older. Yeah. After the hair, not worth the dawn. <laughs> Pete Gillen, thanks for playing along on Sports of All Sorts. Thanks, Ken. Great being with you. All right. When we continue on this edition of Meyer Sports of All Sorts. Oh, no, he didn't. Well, yes, he did. And just watch what happened. But first, time for a little perfection brought to you by Parker's Tavern in Blue Ash. His name is Gentry Stein. And at the World Yo-Yo Championships, Gentry dazzled everyone winning the World Yo-Yo title and in doing so becomes the first American yo-yoer to win the World Championship in six years. Perfect, why well, almost as perfect as Parker's in Blue Ash.